We had it looked at? Uh, Did you have a doctor look at it? Yeah, I had some x rays done. I'm going to go see a physical therapist. So hopefully that will be some progress. It's been, yeah, it's just. Take it easy. Yeah, I guess.
Good morning, everybody. We'll start out with singing the uh, seven line prayer to Guru Rinpoche. Oh, are you Jin? 
chang sang Emma Praise the Shakyamuni Buddha. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious, victorious one, Shakyamuni, to you I pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone, fully and perfectly awakened Buddha, endowed with knowledge and good conduct, gone to bliss, nor of the world, helmsman of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, chakra. Teacher, foe destroyer, thus gone. Fully and perfectly awakened. Now, with knowledge and content, gone to bliss, knower of the world, housing of ordinary beings to be tamed, supreme one, teacher of all gods and men, Buddha, foe destroyer, glorious victorious one, shall community, to my pay homage, make offerings, and go for refuge. You, which you for humans were born, who took seven steps on those very earth that you said. I am supreme in this world. To you, who were wise at that time, I prostrate. Completely pure body, supremely fine form, ocean of wisdom like a golden mountain. Fame that places in the three worlds, supreme protector, to you I prostrate. Endowed with the serene marks, face like a stainless moon, a color like gold, to you I pay homage. The three worlds are not like you, who is free from dust. Matchless one, endowed with knowledge, to you I prostrate. Protector, endowed with great compassion, omniscient teacher, filled with ocean like merits and good qualities, to the thus God I prostrate. Attachments through virtue, with patience from the evil on realms, unique, supreme, ultimate meaning, to the Dharma that brings peace, I prostrate. <clears throat> From freedom, teaching on the path, well abided in the three of trainings, holy field endowed with good qualities, to the sun I also prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout I homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, and all aspects. With supreme faith, I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Accumulate virtue and goodness. Subdue your own mind. Thus is the teaching of Buddha. Like a star, a mirage, a lamp, illusions, drops of dew, bubbles, dreams, lightning and clouds, look at all conditioned phenomena as such. Due to this merit, having attained the state of all seeing, and their lives are doing the anyone faults. May I liberate migrators from the ocean of existence, stirred by waves of aging, sickness, and death. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge in the Guru. I take refuge in the Buddha. I take refuge in the Dharma. I take refuge in the Sangha. I take refuge until I'm enlightened in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. 
I the positive potential I create by listening to the Dharma. May I obtain Buddhahood in order to benefit all sentient beings. May all sentient beings have happiness in the causes of happiness. May all, all sentient beings, beings be free of suffering in the causes of suffering. May all sentient beings be through the joyful happiness that is free from suffering. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from both some cause and others distance. Respectfully, I prostrate with my body, speech and mind. I present the clouds of every type of offering actual imagination. I confess all my negative actions to the of this time and rejoice in the virtuous acts of all ordinary and noble beings. Please, Buddha, remain as our guide and turn the wheel of Dharma until Samsara ends. Through the merit created by myself and others, may the two bodhicitas ripen. May I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. This offering I make with the precious jewel mantla, together with other pure offerings of wealth and the virtues we have collected through all the lifetimes, my body, speech, and mind, all my masters, my hymns, and the three precious jewels, I offer relatives without wavering faith, accepting these out of boundless compassion. Please send, send forth waves of your blessings. I prostrate to the army of triple jack work. <clears throat> Thus did I hear at one time the Bhagavan was dwelling on the mass in Rajaviya, together with a great community of monks and a great community of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Bhagavan was absorbed in the concentration on the categories of phenomena called profound perception. Also at that time, the Bodhisattva Masapa Arya Abhavichamara looked upon the very practice of the profound perfection of wisdom and beheld those five aggregates also as empty of inherent nature. Then through the power of Buddha, the Venerable Sharper and Pudraya said to the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva Arya Avakachavara, How should any son of the lineage who is trained wish to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom? He said that, and the Bodhisattva, Mahasattva Arya Avakachavara, said this to the Venerable Sharper and Pudra. Sharper and Pudra, any son of the lineage or daughter of the lineage who wishes to practice the activity of the profound perfection of wisdom, should look upon it like this, correctly and repeatedly, know those five aggregates also is empty of inherent nature. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, likewise, all phenomena are emptiness without characteristic unproduced, unceased, stainless, stained, not deficient, not fulfilled. Shariputra, therefore, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visual form, no sound, no odor, no taste, no object, no touch, no phenomenon. There is no I element and so on and up to and including no mind element and no mental consciousness element. There is no ignorance, no extinction of ignorance and so on and up to including no aging and death, no extinction of aging and death. Similarly, there is no suffering, no origination, cessation, and path. There is no exalted wishing, no attainment, and no non-attainment. Shariputra, therefore, because there is no non attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and dwell in the perfection of wisdom, the mind without obscuration and without fear, having completely passed beyond error, they reach in the point of nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell in the three times also manifestly completely awaken to unsurpassable, perfect, complete enlightenment and reliance on the perfection of wisdom. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the mantra unequal to the unequal, 
mantra that Crowley professes all suffering should be known as truth, truth. since this is not false. The mantra of the wisdom, Gati, Paragati, Parmasangati, Bodhisattva, who will repeat this silent for 20 times a day. Shari Puja, the Bodhisattva of Lysaka should train in the profound perfection of the like that. The Bhagavan arose from that concentration and commented on the Bodhisattva of Lysaka and Bari Apakachara saying, said, well said, son of the language, it is like that, it is like that. One should practice the profound perfection of wisdom, just as you have indicated, even the Tagatagas rejoiced. The Bhagavan, having thus spoken, the Vanarol Shariwari Putra, the Bodhisattva Mahasattva, Shari, who is surrounding in their entirety, along with the world of gods, humans, Arshuras, and Gadaras, were overjoyed and highly praised, spoken by the Bhagavan. <clears throat> fulfill the needs of all beings and their various levels of understanding, we request that you turn the will of Dharma, including the lesser and the greater, common and extraordinary approaches. Good morning. Good, okay to hear? Oh, good. The Buddha, um, after six years of strenuous practice in the forest, um, um, realized uh, Bodhi awakening. Uh, what did the Buddha awake to? Um, awaken to uh, Pratitya Samuttara um, interdependence, co-arising. <laughs> Sometimes it's translated as like um, fundamental relativity, right? Sometimes I also say independent interdependence, because of course we also uh, sometimes get lost. We think when we say interdependence, we just become tapioca pudding or something and lose our individual <laughs> initiative. Uh, no, we still have that. <clears throat> so. All the teachers then, since then, um, you know, tried to uh, come to that realization. All the students trying to come to that realization. And there have been many, many different ways of saying interdependence, uh, different uh, practices. So for shorthand, uh, in the Mahayana traditions, I guess the word's too long, so we just say, we don't say praticya samatpada or codependent rising interdependence, we just say what? Emptiness, like that. But that can be a tricky word, you know, because then we start thinking that means nothingness. I don't know, like people have tried to come up with other words like openness. Um, transparency is a word I like. I like openness too. <clears throat> Sometimes philosophically we would say um, lack of inherent existence. It's all ways of trying to realize and teach and uh, share interdependence. But it's not just through um, a meditation cushion or a philosophic discourse. Mostly interdependence is realized through um, doing things together, right? 
creating temple, cooking dinner for people, thriving on everything, this interdependence. So to the degree that we realize interdependence, we're going to suffer less. To the degree we don't see that, when we get stuck, um, then we're going to suffer. So I'm fond of my metaphors, so please forgive me because I've used it many times, but um, uh, when we're talking about samsara or uh, things misperceived and uh, suffering that results from that, it's like having our hand right up against our face, right? <clears throat> Did I do that? Did the hand do it? Well, then that, that's, don't put your hand in front of your face. Like that. <laughs> so um, a misperceived sense of what trying to overcome suffering is like when it's way up here, then you try to get your hand clear, right? You know, like, I just want to improve my hand so it's clear. It won't, it won't happen, right? You'll get cross-eyed or something. Or, you know, it's there and it's kind of protecting us, so we don't want to take it away. Or our fingers are kind of open, you know, maybe they're closed like this so we don't see anything. And then we think, okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> you know, I, was, I can see you and I still have my hand, so, you know. Uh, but uh, the Buddha realized that actually the hand works best when it's over here. The only time it really works well is like, when they're throwing the rock or the baseball right at you, and they're kind of like, <laughs> you stop it, you know. Um, so then we do, yeah, you know, lots of production. Okay. Uh, so uh, we don't want to cut off the hand, right? Some people think I'm going to cut off my ego. No, we just just move it. <laughs> just eat right there. You can still see it. In fact. When you look at it, like, what is this, 12 inches? Then I can really see, you know, my lifeline and all my little lines, right? Can't even see regular, this is personal self, right? So not only do I see my personal self clear, but then I can see the whole room. It's just that, okay? But it's very hard, you know, because people are kind of going, you know, can I just have a better hand, but I still want to keep it in front of my face? And you're just saying, just, just move it, like maybe you can even just six inches, 12, like there. And then you can have your cake and eat it too, right? You get your hand and you get to see everything too. And people get to see you and you get to use it. And it's great. Walking around like this all day, isn't that useful, right? <laughs> so that means like, it, you know, interdependence is we, we realize how the body works, right? So the, the, the sight and the hand, and our face, it, it all, when we know how it all works together, then it functions quite well. We didn't have to cut off anything. We didn't have to transcend our hand. <laughs> but um, it's very difficult because it's so simple. Like people go, well, that can't be it. I paid a lot of money and I've studied lots of Dharma, so it can't be like that. <laughs> or maybe maybe the problem is I had a glove on. I'll just take the glove off. Like you still have your hand in front of your face. <clears throat> so maybe we even have this. Like I don't want to see your face. I don't want you to see my face. You know, double samsara. Like just back off. You know. <clears throat> so of course, at times we do need um, to have our personal self. You know, very close. Very, you know, like I just want to be looking at my hand right now. So that does become foreground at times, right? We know that. It's just we have this shoulder and it can rotate. That's the easy part. Most of the time in, in relationships, work, uh, our personal narrative, uh, you know, beginning something with I need or I'd like you to or I wish, that, that's it's fairly foreground, right? It's pretty you know, like kind of there, right? Or maybe even closer. And lots of times it's only when we're meditating or we're alone that, you know, we, we can kind of even put that down a little bit, right? 
but in our tradition, you, you know, like if you put it down, that doesn't mean that's the end. You have to pick it up later. Somebody's going to say, well, what were you doing? And you have to say, I was meditating. So in Tantra, we learn how, you know, interdependence works, you know, how the sight and the sound and everything works, our hand works, we learn how the body and the mind work together. And when we get that, then it works fine. So of course, um, many different paths, um, but it still comes down to just <laughs> and you get to see your hand, your particular self accurately, and you get to see uh, others in the whole world. I know it's it's kind of frozen there. <laughs> kind of right, so like uh, we need to like drop a little bit. So as people know, I. Um, been a Tai Chi dilettante for many years now, but I do pick up a few things from Robert Nakashima. So he likes to talk about uh, uh, how we uh, Tai Chi in daily life. So how we open the refrigerator. Someone is taking a curse, maybe, maybe they, they know. But usually we just yank that sucker open, you know, just kind of, you know, give it to me. <laughs> but it's interesting if you kind of, it actually works. You can try it. Like, yeah, if you hold it, not too tight, but firm enough, and then you kind of drop a little bit, then it opens. You see, you don't have to use this kind of power thing. It's very interesting. You know, it, it, it kind of like you use your whole body to open something instead of doing, you know, the, the old uh, you know, lawnmower thing, you know, that kind of yanking and people go, ah, my shoulder, you know, we're yanking people, yank, you know, just kind of gripping it and you use your whole body and you kind of drop a little bit. So you still have to tell and teach most of the path is even when someone says, yeah, I get it. You know, my hands in front of my face. Um, <clears throat> in the same way with like, you know, massage. So usually, um, you know, like I've, I've got some tightness somewhere. So, you know, I'm getting some nice massages from, from Matthew now, you know. Uh, he's probably having to do this. <laughs> you know, like when my trapezius is really tight, like I just, you can't just say, okay, trapezius release. You can't just say, be awake now, you know, you just have to just interdependence now, you know. So it, it takes interdependence. It takes someone else to help us to release the muscle. So when we're doing small scope practice, meaning we're just kind of in it for eye and mind, we think somehow we'll get enlightened all by ourselves, right? We'll be in some cave, we'll get enlightened, and then we'll walk into town and people will notice it. <laughs> and and we'll, we'll, we'll say, you look in line, you're, you're so humble. And you'll go, yes, I am. You know? <laughs> like that. Um, but actually, we, even though the experience is going to be our own and we have to put in effort, we, we generally need other people to help us out. You know, the, usually our tight muscles won't just relax by themselves. We need someone to kind of you know, someone pecking at the other side, <laughs> like that. So we, we need to try to relax from our side or release or say, okay, I'm willing to have your elbow in my trapezius for a minute. Um, so we have to surrender a bit, right? So it's, it's an interdependence thing. But the path is mostly like that. You can hear teachings like you know, move your hand out of the way. <laughs> or just move it to like 18 inches and you'll be fine. But generally we, we need a lot of help to do that, don't you think? So that's why uh, we're very lucky to have Donna Darge now so that we have to work together. We have to like run around, paint, we have to like you know, 
talk to Mike, like, when are you coming? When are you not coming? Like, I can't come in 10 minutes. I can come tomorrow. You know, there's lots of interdependent negotiations going on, right? That's generally how human beings learn interdependence by negotiation. Okay, when, when can you meet? Or I can do this. Can, can you do that part? We'll do this part, like that. So we're very lucky to have uh, lots of different um, projects that bring people together. It's hard for some people that are kind of like, just leave me alone, I'll do it myself. <laughs> That's generally not interdependence. The interdependence would be, I'm willing to initiate and take responsibility, but I, I know I need others and I'm willing to uh, involve others. And at times I might have to surrender responsibility or I might have to share, co-chair something or share like that. So uh, many times we could have a big temple um, and lots of followers. If, um, I consistently just said, yeah, you do it, the whole thing, and we'll praise you. <laughs> and then, you know, consistently uh, did it that way. But, you know, we, we have to learn how uh, interdependence works, mainly by negotiation, compromise, and working on something shared together. It's nice when we can agree upon boundaries, like the road, the line in the center, I like a lot, you know. We can go both ways on the road if we have this uh, boundary, right? That's also a kind of interdependence, that's an agreement. <clears throat> but um, that's uh, the easy part. Um, It's hard, but it's still like, if everyone follows the rules and the boundaries, things will be okay. Do you agree? <laughs> well, you know, great. So, uh, no. what most uh, systems uh, and um, most people don't have is, they don't have a fallback if not everybody stays on their side of the road or obeys all the rules, right? There's no fallback. And even forms of Buddhism have this like, well, these are the rules and uh, we'll teach you how things work perfectly, so just do it. But there's not the ability of like, well, what if they don't work perfectly or people don't get along? How do you work with mistakes? How do you work with um, you know, a conflict? How do you work basically with a sense of development? So this is uh, why the idea of Tantra Vajrayana evolved, because a, a very sophisticated approach is uh, we do know what the boundaries of the line are, but we also know that uh, you know kids don't always obey the lines, but we want to have them grow up. People don't always obey the boundaries, uh, maybe just out of uh, ignorance, or maybe even they're kind of wicked and they don't, but then what, do we kill them? So Vajrayana is not just how to do things perfectly, but uh, what happens when they're not done perfectly. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's very easy to say these are the rules, but um, I'm always interested when uh, people say that. And I say, well, what if someone doesn't do it? <laughs> what if they don't go along, right? What, what's uh, next? your next plan, right? And then, <laughs> so you do an intervention or something, and then what if that doesn't work? Do you, do you have a do you have something after the first intervention? How many interventions do you have? How many things do you have up your sleeve? So usually people just have one thing, like do the roles, that's it. And then what sophisticated people have, here's how to fix it when you don't do the roles. They're, they're done after one intervention. But as bodhisattvas, particularly tantric bodhisattvas, we, we have a lot of different interventions. Well, it looks like it didn't work that way, so we're gonna, we're gonna try it this way. 
So that's one reason there's so many different um, practices and yogas. Uh, uh, otherwise, um, you know, we wouldn't need them if everybody did things perfectly. So I like to say Tantra and Vajjana is for people that didn't get it the first time. <laughs> the first time, the first time uh, would be somebody like Shariputra who, you know, just heard, uh, didn't even see the Buddha, but, you know, was close, just talked to somebody leaving. Maybe he talked to a monk, maybe just a person. What, what, did, what did the Buddha say? I don't know, I'm just a newbie, but he said something like, everything that arises, you know, then disappears. Everything comes up, goes down, and you have realization. You want to try that with this? Have you just heard that? Did it happen? So, uh, you know, we needed more, we need more teachings, more like, okay, we need to hear a different way, we need to hear it again, we need to hear it a lot of times, right? So that's why we have this sense of path, and that's why it takes it takes time. So it has to be integrated into our body, speech, and mind. So we're going to keep doing a lot more um, ceremonies, uh, and empowerments, and initiations, and jnangs. But uh, the primary way that things happen in temples and communities and monasteries is people get together to like just do things to get together that are fun. They make cookies, <laughs> they create things, they play badminton, I don't you know, whatever. Uh, they have songs, they sing, you know, they, they just do community things, and then you create a uh, real Dharma culture. So it isn't all like high low, you know, expository philosophic teachings. Most of interdependence is getting to doing things together. So we know how our body, speech, and mind work, and we enjoy each other's company. Simple. So I'm going to uh, stop here and see if everything's uh, functioning out in um, uh, remote land. How, how do we know? Is everyone happy with the transmission? So we're getting thumbs up from Mr. West here and Dirk and Morris. That's good. <clears throat> I'm open to some um, questions, comments, or complaints, not only from remote, from Pennsylvania or wherever, but also here. So, yeah, so I think uh, when Jada Rimshi is here, we may not be able to have time for any questions from the floor, but. Um, how, how do we find out if someone's asking a question uh, remotely? They raise their hand. Yeah. <laughs> how do you mean hard? You Paula, can you see on your screen that I raised my hand? Yeah, I can't. I, I don't think you see like maybe nine or maybe 12. Or 12. Okay. Huh. okay. Well, we, we, we need a moderator to either let me know or you know, like someone has a hand up. So we still are working on that perhaps. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk to Rob Best about it, too. Yeah. Anyway, well, I do have a question, Mama. So, hi, Dirk. Uh, I was wondering, you, you said that, that Vajrayana is the path for people who don't get it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> is it also the path for those who don't get it after almost 30 years of trying? <laughs> 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 well, fun as I say, a, a joke is uh, dog tends for people who never get it. <laughs> you know, so um, it is kind of uh, when when we move, you know, kind of 
Dzogchen and Mahamud are part of Tantra, but also kind of the culmination. So it, it's very funny. Um, at some point, you know, we even say, um, there's nothing to get, no more meditation, right? So we're trying to emphasize that, um, uh, you know, also this, this uh, paradoxical quality to the path, right? <clears throat> so uh, there's many wonderful poems uh, in Vajrayana and uh, so in, in Zen, we say that um, you don't get anything. Okay. Yeah. Well, a lot of Buddhists in this work on being like a loser. So uh, you want to lose a lot rather than think gaining might, right? I lost my need to compare myself to others. I lost my need to say I have to live forever. I lost my need to be always right. Uh, you know, I lost my need to constantly need, you know, go after pleasure and push away pain, to constantly want to be praised and not blamed, to constantly want to be recognized instead of ignored. I've lost a lot, didn't gain anything. <clears throat> Usually human beings have a real gaming mind, you know? What am I gonna get out of this? <laughs> you know, what am I gonna get from my membership? Like that, nothing, right? <laughs> you might lose something though that you really don't need and have been getting in the way, you know? Uh, because, uh, you know, we, we have to like, also look from the highest level, like uh, it is all right here and uh, there's, Shambhala is right here. Palachakra is right here. Um, <clears throat> we are kind of, look, you know, like we're either doing this or looking, we're going, I'm looking for my hand. <laughs> you know, and you say, it's over there. Well, I'm looking for my hand. You know, so so uh, we have to say sometimes it's right here. Or, um, you know, you'll never get it. Like that. <clears throat> That's paradoxical but not in an intellectual way, it's paradoxical from our practice point of view. So um, same with Zen story, like um, the founder of Soto Zen in Japan, uh, Gilgan, went to China, and, uh, you know, had some realizations, and when he came back, uh, one of his teachers or the abbot where he was at Heiji said, uh, what did you realize um, in China? And he said, the eyes are horizontal, the nose is vertical. Would that be okay? Would that be enough? <clears throat> so we're very complicated, you know. <clears throat> and dependence is also a good issue. Very simple. But it's better when approaching wonderful teachers, um, um, you know, as Jada Grimshay is, you know, like, it's okay to say, I don't get it, you know, or I'm confused. Um, <clears throat> uh, but you can try also to see what happens if you say, I get it, and see what happens too, right? <laughs> yeah. But we, we also will be tested. Sometimes we do get things and then people say, you don't get it. And then we get doubts, you know? And then sometimes we, you know, we really don't get it. But um, the whole uh, path is examining our experience and seeing if it works, right? So, so much of the Dharma and your terms uh, has to do with functionality. So if you've got interdependence, what? What was your life like now? I would say it's blissful and um, happy. And um, if you like 
helping others and we enjoy doing service you know, with our patient and we enjoy our, our chocolate more as Lali as she would say. Also, we have to like when um, we're around each other. We mostly just have to hang out. You see, like if you want to get, you know, more than intellectual teachings, um, you have to hang out. Just like we hang out with people we like, so we hung out with our families, kids. So we picked up all these you know, not only language but you know ways of being, right? So. Like, with one of my Indian teachers, Geshe Gyatso, of course, you know, like hanging out was like, you could talk about, like, let's be calm and enjoy our meal. But then hanging out was just, it was calm, right? It's different than giving yourself a direction. It just was nowhere to go and you didn't have to be anything. And um, there was nothing to get, right? So there's a felt sense and embodied sense. An intellectual idea. In the center of the universe, where are you going to go? Right? You're there. Oh. I can't tell if anybody else has their hand up. No, yes. Okay. Michael from Padma, Padma Samchen Ling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have all these uh, practices mm -hmm. that I do already. Now this call the chakra business is so vastly complicated and there seems to be a lot of uh, really complicated practices. So am I supposed to uh, like, uh, I don't, you know, time uh, for all these practices. Mm. I'm really comfortable with all my name uh, uh, friends, Vajrasapa and Guru Rinpoche, mm. Guru Puli, that whole crew. Uh, should I be cutting back on them and concentrating <laughs> on doing two or three six session Guru yogas a day, and what about Mahamudra and uh, all the other uh, things I'm doing uh, with people? And there's not enough time for all this uh, new stuff. So this is what's on my mind a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I'll talk is about you know having. Uh, a very big perspective. Um, we can say big perspective by just saying, um, like, be open, right? Just like, okay, we gotta go. Okay, I'll just be open, right? So that that sounds, you know, very much uh, Dzogchen, right? So Mahmoud is be open. Just open, right? So, yeah. So uh, Kala Chakra also says that, that um, the same says, okay, do uh, uh, notice uh, the chairs and the tankas, right? Yeah, so um, um, the other, just yesterday, so I was up in Grass Valley, taking my son Telly out uh, to um, lunch, and then yeah. everybody's been to Grass Valley. Lunch at the Holbrook on the beach, and I'm walking around, um, and like shoppers, because there was there were a lot of people in downtown Grass Valley, which I'm familiar with, because we would used to live. Um, 
But after about an hour, he started getting like activated, agitated because overstimulated, right? Um, talk, started talking faster, and he would kind of make more um, movements. Um, and that means that things are starting to close in and get complicated, right? Because lots of buildings, lots of people, lots of stimulation. So Kalachaka is like, uh, be aware that even when there's a lot going on, nothing's going on. So it, it's like, let's look at the complexity and realize it's just empty form. So if there are a lot of people, we don't have to be thinking about what all the people are thinking, right? Usually we're not thinking about what all the people are thinking. We might be walking around and notice how people are dressed or stare in a crowd where like are you usually thinking what everybody's thinking anybody <laughs> yeah <laughs> they are <laughs> so they're saying hi michael so um when we get um overstimulated uh you know in, in that way psychologically it's like uh, you know, people are trying to think like what everybody's thinking, right? It's like uh, hyper codependence. You know, so that's overwhelming. But usually we're just kind of, we, we go and say, you see people, but we're not, we're not thinking that they're judging us or thinking about what, they, we're definitely not thinking about what they're thinking. So it's kind of open and, and interdependently empty like that. But if we're thinking like, every single person, we have to know what they're thinking, then it's overwhelming, right? So Kala Chakra is saying, actually, you know, there's all these different forms, all these different people, all tankas, stores, cars, you know, buildings, and um, you don't have to be thinking about what they're thinking. Another style is very, you know, very like, just like that. Uh, it doesn't mention buildings and other people or anything. It just says, just be open. Don't, don't worry about what people are thinking. So a lot of times with, with Mahamudra and Dzogchen, there's not a lot of content. You know, it's just like, he just said, um, it's fine. Don't worry. But sometimes you have to say, actually, all the people you see and what you imagine is they're all thinking about you or the different colors or the sounds. You know, uh, they're they're not solid, so you don't have to worry about them. So you know, as Patty knows that frequently people on autism spectrum disorder, you know, are really bothered by sounds, right? You know, they're just like sounds that we'd normally just kind of go, well, that's annoying, <laughs> but or we not even notice that it's just too much, right? Just too much. So. Uh, it's very hard when someone is overstimulated like that to just kind of uh, you generally have to try to get them out of that circumstance, right? Or you try to simplify things, like you know, just pay attention to your breath, or let's go to a quieter room, just speak slowly, quietly. But sometimes you can say with people like even all this sound uh, is sometimes not not an issue, right? Yes, you would say something like it's just sound. It doesn't mean anything. Or it's impermanent. So we don't get stuck on it. So Palach Chakra is a little bit like uh, how to deal with the complexity of life, you know, because of course there are many deities and it all looks kind of overwhelming, but uh, everybody in this room, you know, probably like you go to New York, you go to San Francisco even in this room with all these colors and go, well, oh, it's not, not really that overwhelming. You know? Like it might be kind of enjoyable, but at times, you know, we, we want to sit also maybe in a cave in the dark, something like that, right? Very little stimulation, right? So that's why, you know, sometimes like Zendos and Zen centers that are very just black and white, very little stimulation, right? Or sort of then you're facing the wall. 
So there's, there's very little, right? So there's a time for that too. We, ha we have that in Mahamudra and Sanchan where you're just sitting in the dark and you're not, you know, you're not doing anything, right? But also we have to learn how to deal with complexity. That's part of the world too. So, so in Vajrayana and in our lineage, we, we try to do work with simplicity and multiplicity at the same time. But you want to keep that equanimity mind, like um, not like practices against each other. They're all just kind of going the same direction. You're walking down the street and you hear a car honk. Just like that. Walking down. <laughs> Then a siren goes off. Then what happens, right? Do we keep spinning, you know, or do you know, we do we kind of recover and then get back to la la la? <clears throat> so in Vajrayana, particularly, we're interested in kind of just walking down the sidewalk, but then uh, knowing that sometimes, like particularly on Alhambra Boulevard, so there's this crack, you know. Lift, so you trip on it, and then we have this natural ability to recover, right? It's a drag to fall at our age, right? So it's the experience of, I'm just one with everything walking down <laughs> by the park, and then, then you trip, right? <clears throat> so um, the practices in our tradition are designed like how to make things simple, and then also how to deal with things when they're complicated. Hope that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's the job. Yeah, exactly. One way of saying interdependence. So the you know, most society, most people with all people's trips and things are enormously complicated. Um, you know, when we're confused and we just want to simplify things right and we have to do that sometimes but then also we want to be able to go out in the world and deal with complexity also kala chakra and the other tantras are particularly interested in how we um, organize and deal with complexity that's just my idea you can ignore my quick yeah yeah just do your thing <laughs> Kala Chakra is not uniquely Gelok or anything. It is Kala Chakra, like, um, um, you know, uh, Nimra Kala Chakra, too, the Kargir Kala Chakra, every, all the lineages to Kala Chakra. Just so you know. <clears throat> Guru Rimshe did talk Kala Chakra. Okay, what time is it? Someone's waving here. Oh, are you asking a question? And then Autumn's behind you, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the Sunday program. Um, I know we've been well prepared for, you know, the Friday, Saturday, Kala Chakra. And now uh, we have another opportunity on Sunday coming to us. And so I was wondering, you know, uh, what that program's like, what we should know if we go, that sort of thing. Well, th that's just the perfect lead up question after I'm saying, you know, just we have the union of opposite simple complexity. That's what it's going to be. Just go for it. <laughs> just go for it. <laughs> so, uh, and that's also, that's very nice compliment that we're all organized for Friday and Saturday. We pretty much are. The, the change, as people know, is that um, the higher Griva and Father Lama were going to be at Bound Bazaar, and um, we decided to move it here. Um, and the idea is that Paul and Lama is, we're, we're going to make as much effort to uh, give uh, Mongolian Tibetan community, you know, kind of first dibs, right? So first on this base, but um, 
find where people are going to. It's an important um, day non initiation. But there could be a lot of people. There could be a lot of people on Saturday, but probably less. So, yeah, it's kind of, you know, I, I don't know how many people will be in, in the Gulf and how many people will be back in the dojo, but it could be a lot. So we're looking at getting some more chairs and maybe even being outside. Also. It's unpredictable, basically. <laughs> yeah. So the, the most important thing is um, to, um, you know, the simple complexity I mentioned. So maybe the mantra, oh, they're doing it that way is an important mantra. But we have people that are going to help out with seating and orderliness and um, that kind of thing. But Sunday, um, even though uh, Saturdays, Saturday we've got registration, right? We signed up. So, uh, Mongolian American, there's no sign up. So, <laughs> so uh, you know that Donna Bazaar didn't expect to change. So there's no, there's been no registration from that point of view. So it's just showing up. So we'll see, right? So we have a good, we have a fairly good idea how many people are registered, of course, to come on Saturday, but we don't know on Sunday. Few people have registered for Sunday, and I appreciate that. You know, um, Alden Lama is the primary uh, protector practice we, we do here, and the higher grievous uh, primary yadam and, and protector also. So that's an important. These are important initiations, but um, we don't know how many um, people are going to be here exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so. Um, uh, of course, Masan and Geshe have asked um, everybody to, uh, you know, arrive vaccinated and masked. Of course, for Saturday too. But as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, I can't guarantee that that's going to be the case for everybody, right? So if people are are, you know, concerned, then you know, that, okay, there might be there could be a bunch of people, you know, that okay. Are not masked, and we don't have time to, you know, mask everybody. We'll offer a mask, but we're not going to do Roger police. So, um, if there are concerns, then people can do it remotely. So, we've just given permission for people to do the initiation, you know, to submit. No, you're you're helping out one of these days, right? Yeah. If I remember this correctly, is it uh, on Sunday all uh, not in English, like no English translator on Sunday? Is that correct? Uh, I'll, I'll confirm, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be, you know, in English, but then translated by Basan into Mongolian. So I think it will be in English. Okay. Yeah. I'll probably find out more tonight. And, um, when teachers arrive like Jadarushe, they kind of, you know, they they sometimes you know, vibe it out, you know, what what they feel is the best given the circumstances, because um, high level teachings are highly circumstantial and contextualized, right? That's all Buddhist teachings are. So it was to this audience at this time and in this place. So that's why a lot of times it's like change it at the last minute. Teacher will go, okay, this is the way I want to deliver the teachings given the audience and um, you know given the phases of the moon and you know everything you know so um, so it's not cookie cutter like that <clears throat> anyway the um, the hardest part of the teachings um, is generally for most people impermanence <laughs> right so 
but it was all planned this way and now you're changing it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, like that. So um, the two major things that we have difficulty with are um, on a very practical level is right effort and change, right? So that's why the Buddha's last words were uh, dear ones, you know, all composite phenomena are impermanent. Practice diligently. So it's generally, you know, sometimes teachers give kind of absolute kind of statements, so to speak. <laughs> Maybe in Zen would shout or something. But, uh, you know, the Buddha gave like a profound relative teaching, right? Knowing that the, the problems we have as human beings are very focused on. Um, we don't deal with change well. And um, we don't, you don't know what the right level of, of effort is. Something will be a little bit different than what we expect. So like with most things in samsara, we have semi-control or influence. And that, you know, usually that's enough, actually. But it's not gonna be like the picking up the teacup, it immediately surrenders. And then when I put it down, it just stays where it is. Most people want their world to be like that, right? It's impossible. But generally people are pretty nice at uh, Jainongs and respectful. <clears throat> we have porta potties too. That's <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> It is, you know, that's, yeah. So that's uh, uh, the Kala Chakra Tantra that was painted by one of Jadaram Shay's students. So that's the one we'll be using. So I think we're gonna hang it here. I think the weather will be okay. I think. I just have really one request. <laughs> well, I have a lot, but like, do not argue in the kitchen. <laughs> that is not soundproof. <laughs> the kitchen is not soundproof. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I mean, we have this, you know, that's kind of, we lose context, don't we? You know, suddenly we're back in our own kitchen and I'm just like, what the are you doing? You know, yeah, we can hear it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, big one. Yeah. I don't like that. Okay. Simple. So um, a famous um, teaching by Guru Rinpoche is important, you know, where the tribute to have said, my view is as vast as the sky and my activity as, is as fine as barley flour. Okay. So um, now, as we know, Guru Rinpoche, you know, had a lot of administrative things to do and teachings in addition in India, but um, Guru Rinpoche also uh, went to Tibet at the invitation of his friend Sangharakshita. And um, he walked into uh, a very um, volatile, difficult situation, right? So we know that um, they were trying to establish the first monastery, Samye. And the, the story is that, you know, at night, <laughs> the elves, or not elves, but you know, demons would come and dismantle it, right? So um, we know historically at the time, there was a lot of um, conflict in Tibet around who was going to be uh, you know, kind of influencing the royalty, the king, what, what religious practices, whether indigenous practices, or maybe even Bon was Buddhist, but kind of, 
early on transmission, we don't know, but Urumqi kind of walked into uh, you know, very highly charged political situation, which always means a highly political religious situation, right? So, um, you know, when, when you said something like, my view is as fast as the sky and activity is fine as barley flour, it wasn't that, it was just kind of saying nice ideas that I'm sure he had to have a very open mind coming from India, going to barbarian Tibet, dealing with, you know, tribal customs and competitions, right? We have, we have our little competitions here, right? You know, little things, but um, generally we're not involving the government. Would you like to involve it? <laughs> if you, would you like to involve a government? And then are, right, you know, so when it's established state religion and the government's involved and, you know, it's, it's, it's a mess, right? So we're very lucky that for the most part, you know, the government stays away. So, um, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, and, <laughs> you know, we really don't want to call the police on <laughs> I really don't want the police to do the fire. You know, I don't, I'm not like any government, but this is so nice. This is a little place where we don't need the government here, do we? I don't want the government. <laughs> if they show up and say, how are you guys doing? We'll say, fine. So I'll show you close. We maybe could do closing prayers. <clears throat> Due to the yeah, merits of these virtuous, virtuous actions, actions may I quickly attain, attain the state of Guru Buddha. Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen, arise and grow, and may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chenrezi Tenzubatsu, please remain until Samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Low song, logical display of the deep awareness of all the virtuous ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators, please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokitevara great treasure of the obstacles of compassion, Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom, Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages, Bosangdrapa, may I accredit at your holy feet, 